Hey everyone, I apologize for not being there live virtually. When I signed up for this uh, group, I didn't realize October 31st was Halloween. And as it got closer, I realized that it was Halloween and my daughter is three years old and is excited to go trick or treating. So I cannot miss that, so I apologize. But we're gonna look at chapter 14, who's in control of the asynchronous learning environment that the instructional designer uh, creates. So the learner controlled environment versus the program controlled environment. In a learner controlled environment, it allows learners to select the topics they want, they control the pace, and whether to bypass some lesson examples. So a learner controlled environment can choose what they want, control how fast they want to go, and whether to skip some examples or not. Whereas a program controlled environment, the learner is pretty much locked into what is exactly laid out. So we have the three types of learner controlled environment is, um, there are three types of learner controlled environment. You have content sequencing, which is how it's laid out. The, the learner can choose which and what they want to learn. The pacing, the students can um, so there are three types of learner controlled environment uh, and there are three types of learner control within an um, asynchronous course if you want to provide a learner controlled environment one is content sequencing where the content is laid out in order where the learner can choose what they want to learn the pacing if a learner wants to um, stop or replay a video or skip a certain section and access to learning support. And here's some examples of um, what we just talked about. Like over here on the lesson menu, the learner could choose and select what part of the lesson they want to do. If they don't need to know format, format text, they can go and click on place an image so that you can skip that. Um, and down here, like the learner can choose the arrows. They can paste. The pacing is right there for them. And then down here, they have examples of a good use of page naming or poor use of page naming. So it's really support for them, um, for the learner. So this is a good example of a learner controlled environment using those three criteria. So to maximize learner controlled environments, there are really five principles to follow um, to get the most out of a learner controlled environment. Principle one is give experienced learners control. So you really need to know your audience who you're working with. If you're working with novices who, um, you know, may be new to a subject or um, just their learning styles, you can give um, the more experienced learners control. So you really need to know your audience. Principle two, make instructional events or make important instructional events the default. So um, we'll look right here as at this example that they gave us in the book. So over here on the left in version one, um, the learner could have just chosen next topic instead of going to the practice. So they over here they skipped the practice. Um, and then over here in version two, they made the practice the default where you couldn't move on unless it was, um, unless you did the practice. And they noticed that in version two, um, more learners achieved higher rates of success. All right, principle three, consider adaptive control. 
when you consider adaptive control, you get to tailor the sequence of the course based on the learner's responses to the course. And I think of personalized learning. So if student A or learner A getting the hundreds on assessments on the in the course, he might or she might go a different route. Whereas learner B, if learner B is struggling in content, might have to go back a different route and review what has been taught. And the principle four is give pacing control. Allow for the learner to go on at, a, at the rate that they feel comfortable with. If you see this example right here, um, a learner has like it's like a little video, but they're broken down into slides. So the learner can go back and choose the slide that they want to go to or the slide they need to review. But it also gives the learner control to play and to stop and to sort of rewind it um, and back it up in case they miss something. And the last principle for optimal learning control is to offer, offer navigational support in hypermedia events. So if we look at the example over here, it's really laid out for the learner to choose eras in which they see online museum of technology. You see the heading up here really breaks it down. You have technologies and it, then it has a little subgroup and then the social impact. So this really provides an easy, accessible link for students and they can easily see what they need to choose. And also down here, they have link annotations that um, students can link, click on to give them the content that they need. So those are the five principles to optimize learner controlled asynchronous environments.